Hi, my name's Tally, and I'm back again with another installment of our micro bit information. This time we are looking at what are called pins and extensions. Let us start with asking the question, what are pins? Well, the pins are the gold connection points that you can see along the bottom of the micro bit, whether it's in a simulator or whether you actually have a micro bit. And there's these little holes, there's five holes that go through the bottom of the board that allow you to connect um, crocodile clips or other type of wire connectors. Um, these pins allow us to add extra sensors, extra lights or light emitting diodes, LEDs, motors, um, servos, and lots of other bits of equipment. The main pins um, that we can use on the micro bit are called P0, P1, and P2, with the P standing for pin. The only thing you need to bear in mind is if you are working with micro bits themselves is that if you're using something that requires more than three volts of power, you will also need to add in an additional power source. Now this cannot go through the micro bit because the micro bit can only take a maximum of three volts or you could actually break it. In this case, we're not gonna be worried about that because we're going to be using the simulator and we're only gonna be using low voltage um, hardware. So, that's a basic introduction as to what we mean by pins. They are connection points for additional equipment. How do we use them? Well, we're really lucky because make code that we use of the editor that we've been using for the last few weeks has all the blocks you need to use the pins for basic uh, functions, for basic uses. So I'm going to first of all just demonstrate how to use a simple digital output, such as one of those light emitting diodes and an LED light. Um, what do we mean by digital output? Well, what that means is it's only got two settings. It's got on, it's got off. Um, in computing terms, when we use those two, that digital setting, we use two numbers. We use number zero and the number one. One is on, zero is off. That is called a digital output. The other type of output is analog, which is a bit more complicated because it can be a whole range of different values. Um, so I thought it best to just get us started. Let's just look at a simple on off digital light. So let us now have a look at our micro bit make code. So I'm going to quickly switch over. So here I am in a new program in the make code.microbit.org editor. And I'm going to now demonstrate how to use an LED with one of these. First of all, I'll show you where you can find the pins. Pins can be found in this advanced menu down here. Um, if, it, if it's not open, if it's like this, you can just drop it down. And there we go, we've got pins. And we've got this whole range of different blocks. Now today, we're just gonna start by looking at these two up here. In fact, just this one here is all we actually need. This is digital right pin. Um, and then you can choose which pin. At the moment, it's set to P0. And you can tell it whether you want to write it to zero or to one because it's digital. Um, what are we doing? Well, basically, this is the on off switch for that pin. So if we put it into here and tell it, I'm actually going to set it to P1, which I'll explain why later on. I'm going to tell it to turn an extra light on. Um, we're going to then have to put in a basic startup. So what I'm going to put in here is I'm just going to have the string to tell me which program it's running. So show string, and I'm just going to put in LED so I know the program's running and which program it is. So if we let that run, there's the LED. Okay, so there's nothing new. We haven't got any actual addition showing on the simulator. But you'll see here that this is now lit up with the number one next to it. That tells you it is now sending power to that pin. So how can we show the actual changing there? What we need to do is we need to start thinking of an actual program that we would use this for. Um, I think if we wanted to start with a flashing light, that might be a good point. So let's just have it so the light flashes. So for a light to flash, it has to go on, has to go off, has to go on, has to go off. It's a nice, easy repeating cycle. So we'll put it in the forever loop to start with. Um, so we're going to turn the light on. Now, we don't want it to instantly turn back off because we want to be able to nicely see it. So I'm going to put a pause in. I'm just going to put a little pause. And then we're going to go digital right pin. Make sure it's the correct pin, the same pin as before, to zero. Then we're just going to pause again before it starts again. There we go. So now when the program starts up, we should hopefully see this start to flash on and off. 
let's double check. There we go. So that's really quick. We can slow that down now. So if we slow that down to half a second instead of every tenth of a second, um, it won't be quite so fast on the flash, hopefully. There we go. So now we've got a nice slow flashing light. As I said, unfortunately, this, this simulator does not allow us to see the LED. I can quickly show you what this would look like in a different simulator. So if I quickly load this up. Okay, so this is in a different simulator. This is what's called Tinkercad, which is a program that we will be using in the future for other projects. And if I actually start the simulation here, it's exactly the same program. So I've got LED. I actually, okay, not exactly the same. There's a smiley face. But if you look down here, this is the LED and you can see it's flashing on and off. Okay. So there we have a demonstration of how to turn a light on and off with a micro bit. Now, what else can we add to such a program? Now, it, it's great to see just how to turn it on and off, but how can we actually use it? And the best way to do that is to write a little program. Let's say we want a micro bit that detects sound and sets off an alarm if it's too noisy. Let's say you're in a classroom or you're in an exam and it's supposed to be quiet or you just want to make sure that there's no loud noises going on and you want an alarm to go off when the noise is above a certain level. Now, this is a bit of revision of what we've been doing previously. So I'm, first of all, I'm gonna take this out of here. And what I'm going to do is we're gonna go and get our if statement. We're going to get the logic that we need to go in there. We're going to say, we want the sound level, which is a variable because it's got the rounded edges. So if the sound level, uh, let's go for greater than 175. Brilliant. If the sound level is greater than 175, then we want to put in that flashing light. So now when we run the program, let's get it refreshed, it's going LED. We now have our sound bar that we can increase the volume on. So if we take it above the 175 now, you can see it's sending that signal for the light to flash on and off. Brilliant. What else could we add? I mean, I've said an alarm system, now normally that has sound too. So maybe we have it so it makes a noise at the same time. So let's grab some notes to play along. I've got that one and that one. And let's just randomly pick a couple of high notes. There we go. I am then going to have it so that you can hear the sound. There we go. Okay, so now you should also be able to hear the sound on this program. So now I've set it, so give it a moment to restart. We've got the LED starts up, brilliant. We now have it, so if the volume's above a certain level, it's beeping, it's got two notes. Now let's say we actually wanna speed this up. Okay, so we can take out the pauses and use the actual note as the pause, because the note itself it has to finish the note before it starts the next block. So it will play that, then it will do that. And that will put that nice little delay in for the light. Um, let me just demonstrate. Let's get this all refreshed and restarted. Turn up the volume. It's quiet, no alarm. It's noisy, it gets noisier, it gets noisier. There's the alarm. Now you see the flashing light, you can hear the alarm. Perfect. Okay, so let's just say we wanted to make this program a little bit more um, communicating with us. At the moment, it's got a blank screen when the alarm's going off, it only shows the string here. So I'm thinking I might want a little animation at the start to show that it's loading, that the program is loading. Now, because I'm putting it in the on start, it's only gonna do that once. I want it to do three times, which is going to be a long bit of code. Let's get these in. Oops, put an extra dot on that one. And then that one as well. Okay. 
So now when it starts up, it's going to load. It's going to do a little loading animation for me. There we go. Let's double check. LED, and hopefully it's going to do it like three times for me. One, two, three. One, two. There we go. And then it's now ready to go. Brilliant. And maybe I wanted to have an animation for if the sound level isn't there, just so we know it's working. Um, because now it's just going to have those three dots on it until we tell it to do something else. So let's have it so with the alarms going off. We get an icon then that shows up on the screen that's different. Let's go for it. It doesn't like it. We'll have the skull. There we go. We've got a little skull icon. And then let's have it so um, it shows the beating heart when we're not above a certain volume. So it's happy. It's just happily heart beating. Very happy. I've lost the heart there. There we go. Um, let me put that into an else. There we go. Now, if we run this program, it's got a little bit more to it. We've got the LED start string. It's got a nice little, it's loading animation. There we go. And then it goes to the beating heart. But as soon as it gets too noisy and the noise level starts to go up and it goes above 175, we get the alarm. There we go. Turn that down. Turn it down. There we go. So that will now stop. So that's a basic program for us to actually have it running. Let me now just flip back to the slide, to the slides. So with that program, I have shown you how to use an LED light. We've got it flashing on, we've got it flashing off. You now know how to turn it on, how to turn it off. And you can use it. You can have it so it works on a button, on the sound, any input. But now I want to introduce a few new blocks. Now that we've made that big program, I want to introduce a few new blocks. These are good little programming tips, but they're also really useful for tidying up your code and making it easier for you to see what each bit of the code is doing and to make sure that if there's an error, you can easily find it. Now, what I mean by this is, let me go back to the actual code. At the moment, this program is running this, this whole long block here, and then it's running this block. So at the moment, we have to scroll all the way down just to see our program. What I'm going to do, first of all, is we're running these. These are exactly the same three times. We've got a repeat block. Some of you have already stumbled across this. Some of you have already used it. Now, I've got that animation repeating three times. So now all I need are those three in there. There we go, repeating three times. That way, I can delete that whole stretch of six blocks. Brilliant. So now let's just double check. That should do exactly the same thing. Do, do, do. One, two, three, into the program. Perfect. So we've got a repeat here that makes it easier. It makes the code shorter, but it's still doing exactly the same thing. And we can see what's going on. We see we've got a single animation and we wanted to do it three times. Brilliant. Now, there's another thing I'd like to have a look at changing, and that's this if else statement. Because we don't know what else we're going to do with this program, and we don't know how we're going to evolve this program, and we're only asking for one condition, this one if, there is a different block we could use. Instead of an if, we could use a loop that's called a while loop. Now, a while loop is very similar to an if, but there are some differences, and I'm going to demonstrate them now. If I take this out of here, and just had an if statement here and then wanted that there. So if I wanted to add extra statements to it, extra loops to it, this is always going to be the default. Let's see what happens. Okay, get it to start. There's that animation. Just waiting for it. There we go. We've got the beating heart. Perfect. The noise goes above, say 175. Then we're going to get the skull. We get the arm. But then when the beating heart comes back, Okay, so but that's not ideal, is it? So what we can do instead is stop the noise for you. And we can take this out. And instead of that, we use, we use a while loop. Now, put that back into the normal forever loop. You'll notice the main difference between a while loop and an if loop is there's no plus button down here. You can only put one condition in here. So you've just got this one bar. So we've already made the condition, it's there. It's exactly the same as you would use in that if statement. And we could put this in here. 
Now, the best way to describe the difference is for you to see what happens now that we run the program. If we run it now, and just wait for the load screen and the animation, there we go. Wait for the heart, there we go. Turn up the sound. You'll notice it's just doing what's in that while loop. It's not doing anything else because it's while. While it's that, it's going to keep repeating this over and over and over. And it's not going to stop until the sound level goes back down. Whereas if we had it in if, it would play it, then it would play this, then it would play the if statement, then it would play this. The way the code is written, it reads it from the top to the bottom. So by doing it this way, we've got one condition, we've got it in while that's true, just keep doing what's in there. And there we go, that is a while loop. Now there is one other thing that I'd like to show you this week, and that is making functions. Now, what do I mean by a function? A function is a block that we can use, that we can put some programming into, that we can then call or use elsewhere in the program. I say call because that is the terminology that we'll be using for it. So we create a function and then we can call it in the program wherever we want. So let's have a look at writing a couple of quick functions and hopefully you'll see what I mean by it tidies up the code it makes it simpler to read, but it also separates things out a bit more. So at the moment, we have this repeating animation. We have this alarm system going, as well as the standard basic default program, which is the LED and the beating heart. So if you have a look in the advanced section again, you've got functions. Now, like a variable, you have to make them yourself. So we make a function and it loads up this little screen here, which is a bit different to normal. Don't worry about all these options. If you're creating a function, just get the box, just press done. So there we go, I have a function box, which is called do something. Now, I want a better name for it. I wanted to explain what this function is for. This function is going to be my alarm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out now and put it into there. That is the alarm. That is the turning the light on, making a noise, turning the light off, making a noise. But now I've taken it out of here, it's not actually going to do it because I haven't told it to. This here just sits on the side, telling it that if the alarm function is called, this is what it would do. So if we go back in there, you'll now find call, call alarm. Now, in this while loop, if the sound level is above, it's going to show the icon and it's going to call this. And what that means, it's going to go and look for that function and it's going to do that function. And we can do the same for the animation. We can quickly make a function, uh, let's say, we can actually name it here, load, loading. Let's just call it loading, because it's a loading animation. And we can put that animation in there and we can get a function and we can call the loading into there. Now our program, the actual program it's reading through is just this bit here. And it only calls these when it needs to. And these are in blocks out of the way over here. Let me show you, the program should work exactly the same. So there we go, we've got the loading animation. It runs three times. We've got the beating heart. And as soon as the sound level goes above 175, there's the alarm. So this is an example of three new blocks and how we can use them to make our code tidier, to make it easier for the program to read, but also for us to read. We now know that if something goes wrong, if it doesn't do the animation, it means there's a problem with this here. And then we just go and look at that block. If it doesn't call the alarm or the alarm doesn't work correctly, we know there's a problem here. It makes it much easier for the programmer to actually debug or find and solve errors in their program. So now I've demonstrated how to do a digital output, how to use the pins for a basic on off command and how to also make your code a bit tidier by introducing a couple of new blocks. So what I've introduced have been the while loop, which was repeating something over and over while the condition is true. Then you've got the repeat blocks, which we use for the animation. It repeats something the set number of times, and you can tell it how many times you want it to repeat it before the program continues running. And then you've got your functions, which were those blocks that we created that allowed us to move things out of the way and organize our program so we knew where everything was but also make the program shorter by calling those functions. 
So now we can move on and have a quick look at extensions. What is an extension? And when it comes to the micro bit, an extension is an extra set of blocks. So add-ons, different sensors, different pieces of hardware, different bits of equipment, and the kits that you can often buy that you can put the micro bits into, use blocks that are not normally available within your editor. But we can download what are called extensions, which will give us those blocks. Um, this week, the extension we'll be looking at is called NeoPixels. And I'm going to show you how to get the extension, but then I'm going to do a little program to work through with you how to use it. So let's go and get loaded back into our editor. There we go. So I'm just going to close this at the moment. I'm going to go back. I'm going to get myself a new project. We're going to call this one NeoPixels. So I've got my new program here and I want to use NeoPixels, but I don't have blocks for a NeoPixel. And what is a NeoPixel? Well, NeoPixels are a type of um, strip of lights. They can come in tiles, they can come in strips, they can come in blocks. Um, in this case, we're just looking at a strip of different colored LEDs and you can change their color. So we go here, down at the bottom here, we have extensions. And this loads up a whole range of different extensions. We're going to use this one, it's called NeoPixel. So click on it. So all you need to do is click on it. And now we have this whole new section in our menu called NeoPixel. Brilliant. Now it comes with red blocks and it comes with blue blocks. So there's a slightly different colors going on here. These ones are setting up the NeoPixel. So the very first thing you need to do if you're using a NeoPixel is this top one. And it goes on the on start because what we're doing is we are telling it how big our NeoPixel strip is. Now, I believe we can go as high as 255, but that's a lot of lights to start programming. You know, if you're going to program each light to do a different thing, that's a lot of lights. So I think I'm going to drop it down to 21 at the moment, and you'll see why shortly. So I'm going to have it, and I'm going to put, plug it into pin one. Okay. The reason being, there's a little bug in the simulator, and I don't know if you noticed this when we were using it on the other one, is that... Although the version two has its own speaker on the micro bit, the version one didn't, and they still have it. So in the simulator, if you are using sound and playing sound, it has that little speaker attachment and it connects to pin zero. So you can't use pin zero for anything else in the simulator if you're using sound. So it's just good at the moment, just stick to P1. So I've got my NeoPixels here. I've said it's 21 LEDs, but it only looks like three. But that's fine. Once we start programming it, that will actually resolve itself. Right. So we do the usual. We tell it what program it's running. So we know it's got the right program on. I'm going to call it the NeoPixel. Oh, that's going to be quite long. Isn't it? Let's just call it Neo. There we go. I'm going to call it Neo. Neo, I now know what program it's running. Perfect. And I think I'm just going to demonstrate what we can do with these because you can set see here we've got this variable strip this strip is what it is it's this is what it is so the variable strip is the neopixel it's plugged into pin one it's got 21 leds and then i've just called that variable and told it to show the rainbow fantastic so now if you have your look if you go over it, it magnifies what the lights are doing and look we have a rainbow there we go very pretty now that's just going to stay there and you can see that's now 21 individual lights but it's not really doing anything handy for us. We can have some fun and we can make it do it what we want it to do. So instead of just going straight to the rainbow, let's build our own rainbow. Now this is gonna require some variables, but the variables are already here. They're already set up, ready to go. Now, because they're setting the variables to get them started, they always go in the on start. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set some ranges. Uh, let me just demonstrate what I mean. So. I'm going to set a range. I'm going to make a variable that's called the range. And this is talking to the strip and it's talking to the first four LEDs. So we're starting from LED number zero and it's ending, it, it's then going four LEDs along. So if I was now to say, do, 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 go back and tell it to show range and make those red, let's see what happens. Okay, the program starts. And there we go, you can see zero, one, two, and three 
that's four neopixels, are red at the top, and none of the others are turned on. There we go. But if we want to have multiple different colors all the way down it, and I'd like to create the rainbow again, to be honest, I've done it with 21 lights. There are seven colors to the rainbow. So we can have it. So each of the colors of the rainbow is three neopixels. So we only wanted to go for three LEDs, and we know that rainbow starts with red, so we can actually keep that there at the moment. What I would then like us to do is put in more ranges. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna get set range two. It's created as a new variable, range two. And we're gonna start it with LED number three. And we're gonna tell it to do it for three LEDs again. You'll start to see the pattern, hopefully. So we can then put this in and we can change it to the range two. And what comes after red in the rainbow? Well, orange. Thankfully, the list actually gives them in the correct order for you. Richard of York gave battle in vain. Perfect. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So I'm going to show that as orange. If you want to, you can double check in your simulator, but we should now have three pixels in red, three pixels in orange. Perfect. Now I'm just going to quickly do the others demonstrate. So I'm going to set range three and I'm just going to put in seven ranges for the seven different colors that we want to show. Just give me a moment to get these in place. So we've got six, we need one more. There we go. And we need to do our three times table down this column because we want it to start at the next section each time. And every time we just want three LEDs lit. There we go. Perfect. There. So then we just then repeat all this into here. Go for range three. One, two, three, four more needed. Range four, range five, range six, range seven. And then we sort out the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and then can't see. Violet. Okay, brilliant. So now when we turn it on, we have our own rainbow appearing. There we go. So we have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Now with neopixels, it's quite hard to tell the difference between indigo and violet. It also depend on the settings on your own computer screen as well. So I've just shown you how we can set it to the colors that we want on the different numbers. You don't have to have a strip this long. You could have it just three lights. You could have it just one or two lights or you could have it up to 255. And this is why I was saying having 255 lights to program could get quite messy. Now, this is great, I've got a rainbow, but it's just a rainbow. What if I wanted it to be an animation of a rainbow? What if I wanted to actually have it so it grew maybe? Let, let's just say I put some pauses in. There we go. Now we can watch the rainbow actually light up. There we go. Brilliant. So if I actually hover over here, hopefully we can see it a bit clearer. There we go. You can see it just slowly builds up. I've got a very slow, I'm sorry, a very quick animation there. So we'll slow it down by making it wait a bit longer between each color so we can see it a bit clearer. There we go. Hover over the NeoPixels when it comes up, we can see it. There we go. You can see it building up. There we go. So I've demonstrated how we can use the lights to actually make a, our own little custom rainbow rather than having it on the preset rainbow. The reason you might want it so you can change the colors or have it so certain lights only turn on at certain times is simply so you can then program them to do other things. For example, 
you may want to have it so these all light up one color when you press A, or you might want them to light up as a rainbow, or you might only want some of them to light up. Um, and for that, we could write functions like we showed you previously, or we could have it so that we had them in if statements, while loops, or even have it repeating actions. So in this case, we could have it so the whole strip goes black and black would mean off. So we could change these all to black and the lights would all turn off. So we could actually have it so there's nothing happening. We can have it so we have only some of the lights coming on. There we go. So here you go, you've got these ones are turned off. So it's just showing the red, the yellow, the blue and the violet. With, with this little program, I've just demonstrated how easy it is to add an extension into your blocks so you can use a new piece of equipment, in this case, a NeoPixel in your simulator, and then how you can use it and program it to give you the colors you want. The reason for this is that the exercise that will come with this session, you will need to be able to use this. You will be programming one of these yourself. So I am hoping that, that covers everything for this session. And I'm hoping you've enjoyed this short video. If there's anything that you're unsure about, contact us, or if you wish, just rerun the video. You can always come back and play through it again. Have a go at actually making the programs that I've just made. See if you can use that NeoPixels program that I just showed you and how you would use it, how you could make it so on button A, some colors show, and on button B, other colors would show without interfering with each other. Uh, maybe have it react to sound, maybe more rainbow the louder it is or the quieter it is. Have a look, see what you can do with it, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.